How's it going guys? My name's Graham and welcome back to Niche, a genetic survival game. I've decided that every time there's a major content update, I'm gonna roll back to an episode one. That way we can focus on the new update. It'll be a little bit easier to track major changes that are happening to the game. I've played through the original release and the water biome. I actually missed the jungle biome update and I'm now on to the mountain biome update. So there's gonna be a lot of new material to cover across those two updates. And in the spirit of the new mountain update, we'll be setting up a new world on testicles. Test testic. No, I spelled it wrong. You know what I'm getting at. So I don't know if I'm going to be randomly dropped in just a random biome, or where I'm likely to start. A very small island to begin with. I have options for a nice flowery area. An area with a bunch of bones, which I think indicates a hard a hard area, possibly of a random biome, I think more likely to be just the standard biome. And then like, oh, this is ice. So that 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 might be where I'm tempted to go ahead, is to go venture off into the icy area. Although I haven't been to a fun flowery jungle area, I think I'm gonna go try out the ice area first. Right away you can see the UI's totally moved around. It's gonna take me a little bit to get used to. Uh, up in the corner here, keep track of food, number of people in your population, number of nest materials, because you can now build your own nests, which I think is really awesome. And now that it's in the game, it makes me a little bit like, why wasn't that in the game before? It makes a lot of sense that these creatures wouldn't just be like thieving other animals' nests. In the side here, you can see that your characters have their vision to look for things, but they can also hear things around them and smell things around them. So like this, for example, there's uh, there's a something off in the side there. So let's let's actually take a quick look in here as well, just to see maybe what it is that they're smelling. And if you if you go to the high grass, you can do a harvest type thing where you clear away the foliage. Small chance to find nest material. So if I grab from that, I I there I yeah it, it counted as a nest material so this guy's able to actually smell out nest materials or one of the two of them is it could be either one of them who's actually doing that right now we'll get them to breed really quickly just to get that started harvest a couple fruits you can see in the side here this is just telling me welcome to niche and that we have warm weather but now we're gonna have a feed on the side here of new things happening in the game which I'm excited about that's actually gonna be super useful for keeping track of what's been going on on the island I think these little portraits are new too I don't think they had those before oh Eve ended up with a spiky back and that used to cause harm when you were mating but now it's only if you lick like to heal a wound mating you no longer get injured with spiky back Guess these little creatures switched to like a missionary style, I suppose. Adam has good movement and pretty high fertility. I wonder if Adam and Eve are always going to have high fertility, if that's just uh, ingrained, that's always going to be a part of it. And he's also got some color camouflage. Okay, so if he ends up in the icy world, he might still be well off, but he goes in like a flowery area, then maybe he won't be very camouflaged at all. And let's see, Eve has really high attack, good swimming, so-so collecting, high fertility as well, and good hearing. So you can see our first notification here, letting us know that a new baby's been born, and you can actually zoom straight to the baby, which is very useful. And so who do we have? We have Mila with a nice big fat jaw. And when they're a baby, so you can see here, when they're fully grown, they'll have plus two speed. But right now, it's just set at one while they're a baby, same as collecting. Or no, sorry, swimming. They'll have three when they're an adult, but right now it's just one while they're a baby. Oh, I can hear that there's a weird antlered gopher creature off to the side here. I don't know if it's going to run away from me. Let's see if I can, like, sneak up on it. And I'll switch back to regular vision. Oh, cool. Okay, so there's a little, a little groundhog creature that can run around inside this these little holes, like little gopher holes. A stag mole. I guess that's what the little horns on it are. And there I got some meat to collect. And so it's going to be really useful to make use of uh, these different senses. I didn't, I didn't think that that would be uh, something I would want in this game, but I think that's really cool. I almost wish that it worked in a way... 
that you could see all of them at once, but I get the idea of having to switch between them and make the onus on you to remember to make use of all of your senses. So that's a cool addition, I like that already. You might as well harvest this while you're on it, because we know it has nest material. Maybe I was wrong. There's something there. There's like a little twig on the ground, but he didn't actually get the material. Maybe it has to do with him standing on it. Maybe I ruined it because of that. Collect a nice heap of meat. Wow, you just did not end up with very good traits, did you? Very fertile, good camouflage, but for some reason you're like a very water-based creature, which is not something I was looking for. If I'm going to head off into the snowy area, I should try and get something that's going to help with cold temperatures. Get a big body for a nice cold resistance. Platypus beak, oh look at that, feeding from the bottom and smelling. I don't need gills, I don't think I'm going to do anything water related. We can get some nice stealth and collection, you know you always see like snow leopards kind of stealthily padding their way through the environment, so maybe that could be useful in a snow area. Look at that, we just gave birth to twins. We got Takirku and Rayla. Uh, at least they're not the kind of parents who are going to name their kids like Michelle and Michael or something like that. Their fertility is slightly different, but all of these traits are actually the same between the two of them, which is kind of interesting. And then they ended up with slightly different arms, I guess, because one's a better collector, one's a better fisher. They kind of got a few differences there. I am curious how how operating with a, a group of twins will will differ within the game here. Hey, more nests. Whoa, is this, uh, we got Kurovan over here, possibly an albino? Got heat resistance, da da da, doesn't look like anything says that he's an albino, but he's gotta be, right? He's got like the pink eyes and pure white fur? Be crazy good camouflage if we went to the, uh, the cold area there. He's got a good medium body, ooh, I want to try and recruit him. Oh, he's got away from me damn you but maybe I can hear him nearby or smell him damn it you just straight up got away from me ah oh but do I do I go for the kill here or do I let's uh let's make the move to try and bring you into the tribe I just noticed that Adam's got the big body and so he's he's got like the a noticeably bulky body offer five food to join your tribe that's pretty steep but let me let me see here he's a male I got other females other than other than Eve let's do it let's bring him into the tribe there now we got this goofy cockeyed weird eared goofball added to our tribe don't know if that was a great decision but hopefully he'll be able to contribute something what the heck do we have here it's just like a rock is this like a rock to hang out on it looks like it's just a little raised platform. It doesn't doesn't look like it's actually anything. And now we got Rhoda, who joined the tribe very quickly. Ah, good cold resistance. I'm liking that. And let's try and get a little bit of a new mix going in the tribe here. So Kuravan, you haven't been with us long, but it's your lucky day. Because I'm already going to get you breeding to try and get some new, new genes flowing in our pool here. I need you guys to start sniffing out new food sources. Oh, perfect. Oh, that makes it so much better to be able to just find that stuff, like, conveniently this way rather than just kind of happening upon it. There's so much more I can do to make sure I'm, I'm doing everything I can to keep this tribe healthy and alive, you know? See, already I'm starting to sniff out new bushes. So I'm going to try and spread out, get a good spread of a, a lot of different food sources, kind of build up a little bit of a tribe, and I'm going to try and make my way over to the new mountain area, like, relatively quickly here. Now we have raisins, and she, she doesn't have a lot, got cracking, good collecting, nimble, like stealthy, ah, uh, it's hard to, for now I'm just going to focus on building up a tribe, and we'll move to the jungle world and we'll figure it out after, ooh, I haven't been keeping up with my, my notifications on the side here, warm weather, that was from the other day, I think, mutation, one of the babies has mutated a gene, can you show me exactly which gene that is, 
I wish it told me what gene they had mutated, because I'm, I'm really unsure right now. It rains, and plants regrow. Oh, so if I ever use my claws and just bash a plant, like completely destroy it, the rain will cause it to regrow? And, and so I just wanted to test that out. I guess it's not going to happen in the middle of a rainfall, so I kind of hope this rain lasts a bit, a bit longer than just today now, now that I've, I've done that. I know you were sniffing out a bush. Oh, perfect. And then there's also a little critter over there if he decides he wants to wander over to us. So it might only regrow at the start of a new rainfall rather than just like in the middle of one. So that's something to keep in mind. I have plenty of nest materials. I just don't know what it takes to build a nest. Maybe you can only build a nest on like a platform like this. Doesn't seem to make a difference really. Adam, we could get you to spread some genes around. I realize that's your daughter, but hey, you gotta experiment a little. Live a little, why don't you, Adam? It's not really a, not really a live a little type scenario there. Now we got Kirku, a weird mix of genes. I could have sworn we already had a Kirku. Is there two Kirkus? Do we got a Kirku Jr.? Uh, I'm thinking of Ta Kirku. <laughs> so. A little bit different. Probably a family name, though. Something that gets passed down between generations. I want you guys to kind of make your way along here. Oh, perfect. This is what I wanted. I wanted you to kind of end up near something that you could harvest food from while we hang out near the the eventual place we're going to be... the platform we're going to be using to moving on to, like, the jungle. Or not the jungle, sorry, the mountain area. Specifically avoiding the jungle area. But I, I want to move everyone over that way, and so having a food source over there will be helpful. We'll just bash that bush down and then leave it behind. Oh, you can see uh, you can see this guy is starting to grow up a little bit. So maybe the the rain helped it. It'll stop growing in the non-rainy times. Does moving no longer use food? I swear it used to cost food to move like that. Maybe that was one of the few things that didn't. Like, harvesting nest supplies, that doesn't cost food either. All that stuff used to have, like, a price on it. And so you had to really, like, think about how you wanted to spend those resources. It doesn't seem to be a concern anymore. I think I'll have everyone start making their way over to our little dock here, where we'll be able to make our way over to the, the mountain biome, the new biome here, which... I'm pretty in damn excited to check out. I'm not I'm not fully certain what it'll have to offer. It'll be be a fun little adventure, I'd say. I wonder where all those little uh ground steers or whatever they were, whatever they're called, mole steers, where they went cuz there used to be a whole group of them over here. They must have uh all ran away as I started to make my way in that direction. It's going to take a few turns to move there, especially since Eve just has the worst leg. She's got these flippers and one busted up paw. She can't move at all. She might get left behind, actually. There's not... She doesn't have a ton to offer except for high fertility, but otherwise, eh. Just kind of tear down some of these bushes on the way by since I won't really be needing them anymore. One more turn and we'll be able to get everyone onto the island here. And there, that's all we needed, right? And now, island exit. Let us travel on. They made it so you can't go back. I think you used to be able to go back. Now it's just you're you're out of there, so we're we're gone forever. And here we are, our nice new island. It's not quite what I expected. I expected the whole thing to be snowy, but I'm already seeing there's little oases, little stumps, uh, new plants, whatever that rock guy is gonna be. Weird little plants over here and there, different types of trees. There's quite a bit to see here. A hard a hard snow area it looks like you can go to there based on the fact that there's skulls and everything more bones and all that I'm gonna stick to this island for quite some time I think I want to try and make a real home here I gotta learn how to build a nest but I think these guys will be quite comfortable on their new island I'm looking forward to being able to explore this new biome uh, so far this episode was kind of just exploring some of the new mechanics and stuff it'll be exciting to explore the new biome itself so I'm looking forward to that Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this niche series, and I'll see you again soon.